I'll just make sure I've got that good and snug there. Now I can take my silky and make a pass here on the inside and on the outside. Pretty good at pinpointing these on the end of B and D. I've got the guy rope. I probably have mentioned it, but I usually spread the A and C walls just a little bit so that we can have room to get the shoulders down on the notch. It just makes it easier to to set the logs. That went really well. down just a little bit oh what you got sweet sargo molasses See what I can't see, and I can see what he can't see. So there's times that he'll tell me to pull back on the rope or walk forward with it. When I'm doing these splices, I pull them together with a come along and some big spikes. And what I've done, I cleaned the top of this up just a little bit with a planer. And right here, I have made a mark, a center mark, 
three inches or three and a half inches in from the inside edge. All of my control is on the inside. And I do that at every splice. And I can put a string on the top. I'll come down here to the end. You've, I've got a, a small nail and it is set three and a half inches from the inside. And I'll do that at the other end and I'll put a string on it and pull it really tight. And I can si slide this splice in or out. I can tap it with a small sledgehammer and I'll get, I'm gonna pull a string out of the way and I'll get my string centered on this little point here. I've got a couple 12 inch spikes and what I'll do, I'll drill down in the top of the log at an angle on both sides of the splice and out here and I'll put a come along on there and I can pull this together as I make my handsaw passes, my little silky passes in the, in the, in the connection there in the splice. And I can keep pulling that together and I can get my, my splice really tight. So the first thing I'll do is drill a hole back here and back here and put my spikes in. I'm not going to bottom that out. I'm just going to set it in there part of the way. Just so I can get a good uh, hook on it with the, with the come along. I'll just make sure I've got that good and snug there. Now I can take my silky and make a pass here on the inside and on the outside. Sometimes you'll have to make two or three passes. You'll have to make two anyway because of the about a sixteenth of an inch that I'll leave on my on my line there on, on both pieces. So I'll have to make two passes just to get rid of that. But when I get ready to make another pass, I'm gonna loosen the tension off the the come along so it doesn't put a bite on my on my blade. I'm trying to cut on the push stroke, even though these teeth are designed to cut on the pull stroke. When you've got a new blade and it's pretty sharp, you can do that. You don't have a lot of room back in here to actually make a very long push. Just little short strokes there. And I'll get the one on the outside. Now 
Now pull that tight. Okay, this is closing up really sweet. I could actually make one more pass and have this done. Okay, I've got some pretty good tension on my come along and I've got my fit done. And the last thing I'm gonna do, just to kind of clean this up a little bit, is to sand this lightly and bring this all together. I finished sanding this lightly just to make sure everything was together and I was flush here. Sometimes you might be sticking out just a little bit on one side or the other and you can just take your sander or your slick or a sharp chisel or hand plane if you wanted to and just bring that back down flush. Now what I've done, I'm getting ready to put two pegs in here. They're inch and a quarter oak and I come back from the splice four inches so that I'm centered in my tenon. And I came down from the top three and a quarter inches and I came up from the bottom three and a quarter inches. Now that number is arbitrary. Whatever the height of your logs are, you may want to adjust that. But if you're doing the eight inch tenon, I always come from a splice back four inches and I'll take my level and I'll get it on my four inch mark. Make sure that I'm level or plumb rather. And I'll mark that just a little bitty mark there at three and a quarter from the top and three and a quarter from the bottom. And I'll take an inch and a quarter bit and I'll drill through that. I'm using a spade bit to get my hole started because it makes for a cleaner hole on the inside. I'm just going to drill part of the way with this. And I'm using a, a Dewalt drill. It's got the little level bubble back here at the back. And I'm just kind of eyeballing square off the log and trying to keep my bubble where it's supposed to be there. Make sure I'm still there. And I'll get down and get the lower one. I'm going to finish my hole with this uh, other inch and a quarter bit. It's been used so much it's kind of worn down, but I can ream the hole out just a little bit, but this cuts so much quicker. All right, the final part of this is to put your pegs in after your holes are drilled. And we put anchor seal on, the, on these pegs to make it a little bit easier to drive in there. Uh, just It serves as, as a lubricant because these holes are pretty snug. And I'm going to use light taps with this little sledgehammer. And I'm going to leave about five-eighths of an inch sticking out on the inside and on the outside. Just let it protrude just a little bit. That kind of looks like five-eighths. Yeah, that's pretty close. Five-eighths. 
You may have seen just a little bit of shake. What I'm doing on, on the either side of the splice is I'm coming back and I'm uh, I'm sinking a timber lock screw down through the blocking down here into the log below to help stabilize that. But there you go. That's how you can make longer logs out of shorter ones. When you have a wall that's longer than uh, the length of logs that you've got. I've had a lot of questions about how, how do you splice logs. Now some people will do a half lap. They'll come down like that. And the trouble of it is you have one, two, three places that you have to fit if you're wanting a real nice clean fit. Like this, you have the one, one line that you see and you can come back and sand that if you want to. And with this tenon being enclosed in a mortise and with the two pegs through there, you've got it locked and it won't come apart. I've never ever had any trouble with a splice ever getting loose on me. It just stays tight. But I hope this has helped somebody who is dealing with logs that aren't full length. It's easier to work with full length logs, but here our full length is over, it's like 42 feet, seven inches. And we, we couldn't handle logs that long. So this is what we're doing. And it makes for a nice clean, clean look when it's all said and done and finished. So hope this helps somebody.